Hello, and welcome to the People's Third Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of February 28, 2021. Well, today, as I mentioned, it is a great news that basically the American Relief Package has passed through the House. Of course, we didn't expect anything less because, you know, the Democrats are actually the ones who pushed it through, and not the Republicans because none of them voted for it. As well as, as you saw, if you saw from earlier episodes, also, one Democrat voted against it as well. So basically, they still passed by 219 to 212. But there's still a lot of work to be done with the bill. And now the Senate will be basically cutting, modifying, and attempting to make it a the $1.9 trillion bill a smaller price tag than what it currently is. And as you know, the Senate parliamentarian ruling will prevent the minimum wage from being added to the current relief bill. Most likely, we'll, we'll see a smaller increase tied to another conservative, conservative policies that will get more Republicans on board. I mean, as we know, we already have a few Republicans on board. Uh, well, what are their thoughts about giving it a minimum wage increase? But on the other hand, moving the minimum wage from the stimulus bill that will pass through the um, Reconciliation Act might make it easier for Democrats that would allow moderates to basically come aboard like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. But there's also a downside to removing the minimum wage as well. Like progressives like the um, Sanders holding up the bill. Because if you remember back in December when he actually was going to say if he didn't get his way, he was going to hold up the bill. Bernie Sanders is an independent. He's not Republican. He's not Democrat. But he could still hold up the bill because most independents actually go along the Democrat lines and not the Republican lines. And on the other hand, as I mentioned in an earlier update, there are many different plans for to increase the minimum wage. There is Mitt Romney and uh, I think it's Joe Cotton. I think this is his proposal to increase the minimum wage to ten dollars per hour by twenty twenty five. Joe Manchin wanted to increase the minimum wage to $11 an hour by, by 2025 as well. The new, the, and the new proposal where Democrats expose, explore tax, taxes largely hitting Fortune 1000 companies not paying $15 an hour, targeting companies with $2.5 billion or more in gross receipts that do not pay $15 an hour Nothing is, but, so basically, this this is what they're thinking about doing. They're thinking about actually hitting the oh, Fortune 1000 companies that are making $2.5 billion in annual gross income with steeper tax fines until they can afford, to, until they can actually pay their employees $15 an hour and give them positive incentives to the small companies to actually help them offset the cost of the minimum wage so it's more easier to, to hit in them than, you know, just give them a straight up $15 an hour wage and this closing down a lot of companies. So basically Democrats are looking for alternate ways to actually find the big companies and encourage the small companies to come bigger to pay the minimum wage. Whereas Republicans and Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema are more concerned about either the states they're located in or thinking that $10 an hour is actually a good living wage, when in fact it is not. But <clears throat> we actually won't know anything about this bill until the Senate is done with it. Right now they're, it's in their hands and they get the chance to now basically cut it, modify it, hack it up, make it, make it look like something nice when it's actually trash. So we'll actually see what happens with that. Hopefully the Senate will actually try to actually make it look really good, because otherwise it's going to look like crap. And he's going to piss off a lot of people. And on the COVID news, the FDA has basically authorized emergency use of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. It can be given to anyone of age 18 or older. So basically you can't be 17 or younger to get this vaccine. And nearly 4 million doses are expected to be delivered this week. So that's pretty good, actually. There's a few advantages to the um, ex to the vaccine from Johnson Johnson. 
The first is that is a single dose vaccine. It's not a double dose vaccine like Moderna and Pfizer. Pfizer, sorry. It's also easier to store during distribution and transportation, which would roughly increase our vaccine stock by 25%. And although the percentages of effectiveness isn't as high as Pfizer and Moderna's, meaning others Johnson's Johnson's effectiveness is 65%. Well, Pfizer and Moderna is 95% or higher. Um, it is will be actually still be highly effective in reducing the effects of COVID-19 on severe cases. And nearly 7% of the American population has received both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine that came from Pfizer and Moderna. So basically, uh, the people out there you see cutting down President Joe Biden for not doing anything are out of place because... If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have all the 7% of the population inoculated. And if you've been watching, Biden and Vice President Harris have gotten their doses of the vaccine and nothing has gone wrong yet. They're trying to get more doses of vaccine out there so we can get all the population vaccinated so we can have the, the herd immunity is what they're talking about because what they believe is is if we get all of us uh, inoculated against vaccine, sorry, inoculated with the vaccine to prevent COVID, that in the long run will become immune to COVID-19 and its various strains. Even though we keep coming up with new strains of COVID-19 all over the place. I mean, we have the South Africa version of COVID-19, which is supposed to be more resilient against the vaccine, as well as more highly contagious than the one from Europe. And that's right, we have a Europe uh, mutation vaccine as well, of the COVID-19 as well. So basically... I don't know what to say about COVID-19, but if they tell me that I need to get my shot, you know, I'm going to get it because it better be safe than sorry. And on that note, I hope that every person watching this, every one of my subscribers and viewers actually has a happy and safe Sunday. And I will broadcast again to you guys tomorrow or Tuesday, hopefully tomorrow. So if I get some good information for you guys from the Senate, but we'll see. Um, but like I said, I will broadcast you again to you guys when I actually have more relevant information that you will find very interesting. Until then, you guys have a wonderful evening. My mother told me someday I would buy galleys with good oars and sails to distant shores. Stand up high in the proud